Welcome back, it's me, your boy, Matt. I'm just talking about tanks once again. Medium tanks, actually. And medium tanks is a very weird dynamic, really, isn't it? When you think about light tanks and heavy tanks, you get a defined purpose. But medium tank really opens up a door for a whole host of different options when it comes to tanks. The reason for this is if you're going to use tanks on tanks, you're going to want to use heavy duty, heavily armored, heavily armed tanks to engage them with. But with the medium tank, we open a door that's quite unique and specifically to an environment that they're used in. Now in terms of classifying tanks in terms of their overall structural basis, whether it's large, medium or light, it's not really something we do anymore. For the most part, a tank is designated as a tank as normally a main battle tank, not a main medium battle tank or a main heavy battle tank or a main light battle tank. They don't exist. However, the structure of light scout vehicles or light reconnaissance vehicles does apply and I guess you could somewhat classify them as tanks and I'm not going to begin the triggering of people that call you know APCs and IFVs tanks because we know that's not the case but it is kind of strange when we talk about the medium tank world because it kind of smushes together the IFV and main battle tank together to make this weird hybrid vehicle that is designed to be a tank but not really be a tank. Today, folks, we are talking about the Kaplan MT, or medium tank. And it's quite unique, really, in the fact that it is used in specific purposes. It's not there as what you think a tank is there for, to take on other tanks in these tank-on-tank -tank engagements. Big old 120mm, 125mm cannons blasting at one another. That's not what this is about. This vehicle was primarily designed to be something that supports infantry and can still engage quite heavily armoured vehicles, but in a very difficult environment and terrain. These vehicles are designed to be placed into areas where bridges are extremely light, jungle environments, roads that are extremely difficult to get by, and trying to move main battle tanks in those kind of environments I just described is near impossible. Now the Kaplan MT or medium tank is a modern medium weight tank developed jointly by FNSS and PT Pindad. It is designed to offer a high lethality in a combination with superior tactical mobility, which specifically means it can be dropped off by aircraft, cross bridges very easily that other, you know, heavy 65 to 70 ton upgraded tanks can't do. And the first prototype of this tank was exhibited during the 13th International Defense Industry Fair, or IDEF, in 2017. So it's fairly new, and this was done in Istanbul in May. The tank made its first public presence in Indonesia during a military parade on National Armed Forces Day in October 2018. Kaplan MT designs and features the layout of the Kaplan, with the tank resembling a standard main battle tank for the most part. However, a lot of the key features of a main battle tank are not there. The large, overly sized structure and the low hull down position is really not something this vehicle does very well at. But does it need to be? I mean, it's not really a classified as a main battle tank. It doesn't need to be in these frontal tank on tank engagements, hull down positions, dugouts, charging across the European plains, or, you know, heavy duty tank warfare battlefields. It's not what it's there for. It's there to be in a supportive role in very difficult environments, terrain environments specifically, like jungles, horrible tracks, very muddy, wet conditions, which some heavy tanks like the Challenger 2, the Abrams, the Leopard, will all get pretty much bogged down or definitely stuck at when it comes to crossing bridges and the such. Now the vehicle's driver is at the center of the forward hull, and the turret is central to the middle of the vehicle, along with the crew other than the commander and the gunner, the no loader on the vehicle. There is none, uh, because it's automatic loading. The power pack is at the rear of the hull. The interior has been designed with a major emphasis on crew ergonomics and various tactical and battlefield conditions such as driving, firing and loading or offloading of ammunition because the loading itself is actually done automatically. The drive position offers an enhanced field of view and convenient access to the control panel and driving instruments which primarily are being used on an electronic basis which means he doesn't have to actually pop his head out or look through the periscopes, there's actually cameras on the side of the vehicles which we're seeing more and more and more throughout the modern day world when we're talking about vehicles and track vehicles because you know situational awareness of being able to see around your vehicle is very very key but also the protection of the crew members being in that situation is even more key. And electronic cameras and all these sort of, you know, gizmos that are allowing the crew members to do that is becoming more and more apparent throughout every vehicle class and new vehicle you see out there today. Just go check it out, they're everywhere. The gunner and commander are provided with sighting systems for observation during both day and night and extreme difficult weather conditions. 
While the commander's position is installed with a panoramic sight, almost like the CITV of the other main battle tanks you see out there today, it is definitely not without its faults. Unfortunately, the CITV on this vehicle is so high that it is extremely exposed to small arms fire and potential indirect fire from artillery. Something of which that this vehicle is really going to have to be careful with, especially when it comes to infantry direct fire, because it will be working in close range engagements against infantry in the environments that it's been tasked with. The Kaplan MT is also equipped with a battlefield management system, something very common that we see once again in all sorts of vehicles today. Now, battlefield management systems are common throughout most modern day vehicles and even older ones that are being upgraded. It's crucial to know what the rest of the battle group are doing with these top down view or map view systems that allow you to see what vehicles and what parts of the battle group are doing what. And that's imperative to a commander, whether of a vehicle of all that battle group together, working to communicate to one another. And a wireless crew intercom allows them to do that in between, which is actually crucial because the wireless intercom is also linked to that battlefield management system. So that if even the driver wanted to communicate with another vehicle down the road, all he has to do is access that BMS and can actually communicate with another driver if he wanted to. Now, of course, that comes along more into the world of radios, but it's still a Applicable because it means that any crew member of this vehicle can integrate themselves with that BMS without having to just be the commander of the vehicle and that's nice that's something I would love to have had in my warrior in Afghanistan is being able to see the commander's BMS and see what's going on because as a driver or even as a gunner it's nice to see the bigger picture of what's going on instead of just waiting for your commander to have five minutes to pass on what's going on in the distance. Now the armament aboard this medium tank is rather interesting and it's one of the key features that I'm kind of skeptical about overall. The tank is fitted with a CMI Cockerel 3105 turret mounting a Cockerel 105mm high pressure anti-tank gun. The lightweight gun features an advanced autoloader to deliver the rapid fire power that's been given. And for a vehicle like this I would definitely agree that an autoloader is a good system to have. Reducing the crew, making it smaller, not requiring that extra person to sit in the seat and therefore making a bigger structure this vehicle reduces its overall weight and relays back to exactly what we want this thing to be. Quick, um, you know, dropped into an environment that doesn't need to worry about heavy duty vehicles rolling across the mud or in the jungles or across bridges and stuff. Absolutely perfect. However, the 105mm gun is not something I would expect to see on a tracked vehicle today. It's interesting that Cockerell is still running the 105mm gun, and I've done videos on the gun system in the past. But it, to me, it's quite an obsolete gun system when going against other modern day tanks. However, Let's take a step back. We're once again trying to compare something to engaging other tanks. And that's why this medium tank philosophy is very confusing because the vehicle, I can guarantee you that it's been proposed for places like Indonesia, they're not going to be engaging other tanks. And if they are, they're not going to be tanks that are going to be, you know, too concerned about being engaged with a 105 millimeter gun. So yes, the gun is pretty good at what it can do, but ideally it's going to be shooting things like you know, Hesh or Heat Rounds, and that's really where we're looking at here is the Heat Round or, you know, anti-personnel rounds that can be put through this gun. It's not going to be Fin Rounds. Uh, ideally, it's not going to be Hesh Rounds. It's going to be those high fragmentation rounds that can support and engage um, along with the infantry, knocking out buildings, soft skin vehicles, lightly armored vehicles, um, bunkers, trenches, all that sort of stuff. I think that's kind of the primary selling factor that they're going with this. The 105mm gun can find NATO standard 105mm ammunition, which is good because, of course, creating a 105mm gun, you want something that can, you know, capitalize on other vehicles and other ammunition platforms out there. It can also engage targets at a maximum distance of 10 kilometers, which is pretty impressive. Of course, no main gun would be complete without the secondary weapon system, including a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun mounted to the left side of the main gun, which is going to be, for the most part, I would say the most used weapon system on this vehicle when it comes to supporting the troops on the ground. The vehicle also has its own self-protection features. The MMWT provides Stanag 4569 level 4 ballistic protection against 14.5mm armored projectiles and 155mm shell splinters. It can withstand an explosion of 10 kilograms of TNT under the track and the bottom of the hull. The tank can be hinged with an add-on armor to increase the protection to Stanag 4569 level 5 to sustain damage from 25mm armored piercing discarding Sabo Tracer or APDST rounds. The Kaplan MT is also fitted with smoke grenade discharges, a chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear protection system and a laser warning system for increased survivability against hostile threats. Of course, this technology is 
booming in the military sector because anything that can prevent um, an engagement to a vehicle is very, very high in the spotlight right now. You know, we have Shatora, all those weird and wonderful Russian systems, and uh, the Israel's own systems that they've got going on. There's tons of them being produced, even the Black Knight system that the British Army is using on Challenger 2. And more and more, we see this technology coming out, these early warning systems, these smoke grenades, fancy smoke grenade launchers, really, really cool stuff. I don't know specifically how well it's being put on this vehicle, but clearly they're investing the technology into saying, you know what, we're probably going into jungle environments, we're probably going into tight-knit mountainous environments, this is a really good environment for RPG attack, IED attack. They're not looking at these big, heavy armoured, um, you know, explosive reactive armour packages on the front of these vehicles. Um, they're going to stop fin rounds, all this sort of stuff. I'm not saying ERA would stop fin rounds, but they're not looking at these really heavy ceramic armor plating composite packages. They're looking more along the lines of, I want to stop a projectile hitting me first, and those projectiles are probably going to be RPGs or some kind of anti-tank weapon system launched by infantry and not from tanks themselves because it's not there to engage other tanks. You know, the CBRN protection system is pretty standard, but it's nice to see they've implemented it there. It's something you probably could skip out on if you're putting it into an environment where, you know, you're not going to be worried too much about chemical weapons in the jungle and stuff, but still, it's, it's pretty applicable. The vehicle is powered by a new generation diesel engine coupled to a fully automatic, electronically controlled transmission, and therefore it is really, really important that it's good at going up hills. They've done a lot of testing on this thing whether it be going up high inclines or long inclines for long periods of time. One of the big parts of this vehicle being put in mountainous areas is, can it travel up hills for long distances? Can it go downhill long distances? I think an interesting thing we always talk about when we talk about power and engines is, okay, I can get this gigantic tank up the hill, but coming back down, can I stop it from burning out its clutch and brake pack before it gets there because just like a vehicle traveling down very long hills or a large truck traveling down long hills if you don't have the correct braking system your tank is just going to keep going and you're going to press that foot pedal and nothing's going to happen so it's interesting to see that you know they're looking into power packs that are very very robust uh, to allow vehicles to go up and down hills all day long with no problems like overheating or the you know brake bands just failing on you and i've been there it is not a good time the power pack is also equipped with a cooling pack integrating an intelligent software controlled hydraulic fan for improved torque and fuel economy. The auxiliary power unit aboard the tank will enable the operation of the turret without the need for the power from the engine, reducing its overall acoustic signature when doing attacks or just defensive. The anti-shock suspension system of the Kaplan MT features torsional bar systems with double pin tracks offering a high mobility on both urban environments and cross country conditions. Each side of the track includes six dual rubber tyre road wheels with forward drive sprockets, idler and track return rollers. The vehicle can operate in extreme temperatures ranging between minus 32 and plus 55. But let's be honest, primarily it's going to be used in extreme hot temperatures and humidity, which is what it's designed for. The tank has a maximum road speed of 70 km an hour and a minimum operating range of 450 km. Now this is crucial, a vehicle that can travel at 70 km an hour with a 105mm gun on top with a 3 man crew, that's pretty impressive. You want it to be fast and nippy, but it doesn't quite hit the level of light roll that I would expect to see, and that's good, and you don't want it to be, but at the same instance you don't want it to be too heavy to not get across the bridges, and it's pretty impressive to be able to reach out to 450 kilometers. that's pretty standard through most vehicles today. It needs to though, because it's not going to use all that fuel, you know, traveling long distances, it's going to use it going up hills if it's in sort of mountainous and jungle environments. Speaking of mountains and slopes, it can negotiate gradients and side slopes of 60% and 30% respectively. It can climb a vertical obstacle of 0.9 meters and can cross a trench of 2 meters. Again, pretty standard. Now if we want to talk about comparison to actually engaging other tanks, let's take a look at some. The Kaplan MT, only 35 tons and armed with a 105mm rifle gun, really stands no chance against some of the other bigger contenders. The M1A2 60 tons with a 120mm smoothbore gun, the Challenger 2 is 62.5 tons with a 120mm rifled gun, the Leopard 2 is 63.3 tons with a 120mm smoothbore gun. On comparison to modern western tanks, its gun is weaker and significantly lighter than most MBTs, so it probably wouldn't last in a tank battle at all for more than a couple of seconds. The only advantages really of the median tank would have its speed and agility to fight in enclosed spaces like Indonesia, which is why it's been involved there. With modern weapon systems, the median tank though is 
pretty pointless overall, which explains why they went out of service in most Western countries after the Cold War. After all, a warrior or a striker could fill the same role with better advantages being a troop carrier and anti-tank missiles on board or on top, which is why I find it very interesting that this vehicle really exists. You know, certainly it's not a system to go up against some of the top line armour. Lacking the standard armour against modern 30mm APHE rounds is quite chancy in itself. There are a few examples of Scimitar Recce vehicles actually being able to take out Type 59 and 69 Iraqi tanks with the 30mm runs in Desert Storm, so it's difficult to see how this vehicle wouldn't be equally vulnerable, but I'm sure there are upgrade packages for it out there. It is really hard to see though. I think it's a great tank however for smaller nations to field as suitable for jungle and city environments. The most important factor has to be that nations using this tank are able to keep it supported and allow their crews to train regularly, so this smaller option and limited role looks to be quite a good fit for that. Now as to standing up to the MBTs, we know that it's just not going to be able to, but it's not a bad design in most limited areas even though I prefer my MBTs. It does have the potential to be a very useful machine. In direct engagements of course we don't want it to be there, but it should never be placed in those engagements. And I hope to see it in more of a supportive role to infantry, you know, supporting backgrounds of the, you know, engagements of small towns, going up in sort of mountainous environments, being able to put rounds across the other side of the valley without having to actually waste, you know, anti-tank weapon systems. The autoloader is key I think here, being able to reduce its overall footprint, but I think in general it's a pretty formidable vehicle and for what it's put against it's going to work quite well it just has to stay in that sort of light to medium role and that's why creating these roles is kind of weird it's a weird dynamic where we say yeah it could be used for one thing but not the other and you know challenger 2 abrams or the bigger heavy chunkier tanks they can do a broad broad aspect of engagements but they cannot be put in environments that are more challenging to pardon the pun, Challenger, um, to the vehicle's power pack and its capability to cross bridges. And I think we're going to see more of this kind of thing. It's just funny that they've put it on tracks and not on wheels because most armored fighting vehicles today that are coming out are all on wheels. Wheels is the way forward. It's nice to see that the Kaplan is actually focusing back on the world of tracks because we all love a bit of armor with some tracks on it, don't we, folks? Anyway, thank you everyone for joining me on today's video. I hope you learned a little bit about this impressive little medium tank. Of course, please don't try and compare this to the bigger boys. It's not designed to be there, but I would love to hear your opinions in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like and a comment. I'd love to hear your own opinion on this. And if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, hit that little bell button with the subscribe button so you can actually be known of when vehicles and equipment videos that I do come out. Again, if you want to support my channel, you can go check out my Patreon page. All the links for me and my channel are in the description box below. Thanks again for joining me, everyone, and have an absolutely outstanding day. All the best. Bye-bye.